to now breakdowns are my favourite jobs. I love doing breakdowns. If you can save a boiler, it's repairable. I love it. So this alpha, what was happening was put the hot water on and the temperature going hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. So we diagnosed it as a diverter valve. I'll show you that in a bit. And yeah, let's get to it. Let's get it replaced. So this is the boiler, it's an Alpha CB28. I'll replace that diverter valve. And what was happening was when the customer was running the hot water, it wasn't staying on. So there's a problem with that switch making there. That's right, so the diverter valve's on the way out. It's not the plate, we checked that. The boiler would just completely cut out, go freezing cold, then come back on. So I'm going to drain it down and we get that out. Now, it's never a good start when the board has been plastered in. So in them side cases, you're never getting them off. And not unless you break the plaster out. The bottom panel had to come out because we need to get access to the drain off. So we had to use a multi tool, take some of the plaster out. And we just about managed to get the bottom tray out. It was a bit tight. We got it out. That's 13 mil spanner on that drain off. Just going to undo that. Make sure we've got a good flow of water. Then we get the arse pipe on there. There is a big bucket underneath there that you can't see. Because the boiler's quite old, them nuts are going to be rock solid and them seized on. I just prefer using my big Nipex grips. Now, people are going to say use an adjustable, but I just find it a lot more comfortable to use my big grips. Now, it is drying down, but as we're taking the nuts off, there is quite a bit of water coming out, so there is holes on the bottom panel. So it's going straight through the boiler and we've got something called a NERAD funnel. Just underneath, that's just protecting electrics and going straight into our bucket. What I'm undoing there is like a little gub screw. The coal main is just a push fit, so you undo that gub screw and you can pull it out. Now the plate and the diverter, you can get that out as one, but that push fit connection at the back was rock solid. It, it wouldn't come out of the plate, so you can use that flathead screwdriver there, get a bit of leverage on it. And just force that coal connection out. You see, I'm having to undo that nut now. It's not me to take the plate out, but the diver, but it's not it's not playing game, so I'm undo that coal connection. And we should be able to get it out now. There we go, it's the diverter out. Ready for the new one. That's the old diverter valve. You see that little hole there? It's like a spindle. So what happens is, as the hot water demand is made, that spindle will move and retract. And there's like a, a marker switch there. Look for place that as well. It makes and breaks that, and that's what tells the, the boiler to bring the hot water on. And you can see it's pretty, pretty gunged up. It's just the age of it, and this is a new one. So now we're going to get a new diverter in. So I'll quickly explain how we diagnosed this one. So the hot water was going off about 30 to 45 seconds. So it was mainly happening on the shower. So I run the shower, continuity test on the switch, the mark switch on top of the diverter, and it was making and breaking. And it was working better with the kitchen tap on. You'll find the diaphragm's probably on its way out, but because of the age of it, you're going to find all that diverter's mucked up. So it's just better to fit the new diverter on this one. Right, so I've got that one on, got that one on, but I line that one up. Back one don't go in place, and that one don't go in place. So I'm try and get that one on, then that one, then that one. And when I have done these in the past, I have had trouble lining all the nuts back up. It can be a bit of a pain, so what I'd recommend is loosely connecting nuts first just get them on a few turns each one don't tighten them up until you know you've got them all in it should make it a little bit easier all right so I managed to get them all lined up now so yeah i'm just going on a few turns now if you ever got a nut that won't line up and you just go get the finger just wobble wobble and turn and it will 
line up for a few more turns. Just wobble and turn. It'll just line the thread up. There you go. Just got to tighten that in. That should be good to go. So we're going to close the drain off. And we didn't show you at the start, but the, co the stop tap didn't work. So we had to cut a little bit out at the bottom, get our grips onto the cold mains to isolate it. So got the mains back on, filled up the boiler. And just checked our connections for any leaks. Alright, so we're just going to test the hot water now. What was happening before was when you put the hot water on, if it was on dead low, it wouldn't come on. So let's give it a try. So that's on dead low. Like that. A low flow rate. And it's coming on there. Perfect. Just a quick view of the diverter up close. Then four screws there, take them off, and you can actually replace the diaphragm, but it wasn't worth it on this one. It's all gunged up. On top, there's your micro switch. And if you take that off, you'll be able to see where the spindle moves in and out to make and break the switch. Okay, so last job we're going to do is the fluid gas analyzer. Oh, I still want these just to make sure it's all burning out. Okay, so let's see how that gets on. The AJ burning, that's burning right, that is looking good. Right, just do all the other basic checks on the boiler and that's job done. Best tip I could give with them is, you know, the nuts when you're trying to line them up. If they just won't line up or, you know, they're just out of line, just shake the valve and turn the nut at the same time. Shake, turn, shake, turn. And you'll get a few turns on it and you'll know it's in line and eventually you'll get it on. Them alphas are dying out a bit, to be fair. You don't see many old boilers now, but you've got a boil like that, and I want to save it. I'm all game for saving boilers, really. 